ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂದ್ರ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುಣ್ ಮಿಲಿತ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಪಿಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸುಪದಾಂತ ವಂದೇ ಅಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಸಾಗರ ಜಾತ ಸಾಗನ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಾಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಣೆ ವಾಂಛಾಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತೀತಾಂ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಪ್ಲೆಷರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಒನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಕನ್ಫರ್ಮ್ ಆನ್ ಚಾಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಐಮ್ ಆಡಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಬಿಗಿನ್ ಯಾ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಸಿ ಡೇ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ಡಿಂಟ್ ಇವನ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಹೌ ಮೈ ಟೈಮ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ you know because morning uh, we had given a class in temple and then ever since then i'm sitting with this preparation reading 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 of course i have been reading a couple of days before as well for this but there is so much of stuff available on this entire ram janma bhoomi and the fight of 500 years as i wish to call that uh, actually i never completed by uh, <laughs> preparation and my presentation as well but anyway whatever i have and share and i'm sure many of you here also would have done your own study so you can add to it so uh, i'll just before i begin i'll just uh, you know talk about some of my references um okay i'll just mute everyone someone is unmuted yeah so this is a very ancient uh, you know somewhere in the 80s uh, this booklet was published on shri ram janma bhoomi uh, romanchakari itihas so it's a very very old book maybe 30 40 year old so i have the soft uh, the copy of it uh, i'll share it with uh, on the group later so this is one reference that i had uh, then also there is this paper it's a, it's a kind of again renowned paper by this one yanendra pande on uh, this topic of new history of ayodhya so he has also said many interesting things uh, my good friend mukundanand prabhu he has collected a lot of information from several places and also we had to verify many of the information said by these people on internet third party sources even wikipedia sometimes you know we used to just confirm that what is said by these people whether that is also being said by the others and so on just to get a confirmation overall it is such a fascinating history you know this history of 500 year war to get this one temple of ram janma bhoomi right uh, so we we'll begin uh, yeah so yeah so there are many things to be said uh, you know there are two lines of presentation here which i will have one is about uh, the I, i hope my slides are visible right so yes yeah yeah important chronology yeah so there are two things to be said here one is about the chronology of various events that happened over 500 years and the other is the legal chronology and uh, the archaeological survey chronology etc you know so there was there was struggle on the ground and there was also struggle in the courts okay so the struggle in the ground was for 500 years uh, dating from 1526 and the struggle in the legal uh, battles the legal battles the struggle in the courts are actually from 1885 1886 that is the first time a case was registered in uh, you know the court so since that time literally the struggle is going on so just to understand the impact of it right so each and every small thing also contributed in its own way for example a simple thing you know uh, shri guru nanak ji visited this ram temple in 1510 and uh, this is documented in his biography called janma saki okay it is very well documented that guru nanak ji visited the ram janma bhoomi in 1510 now you may say what significance this has this had a lot of significance because much later when we had to prove in the court that there was a temple before this masjid at that place such records uh, came uh, you know became very important or even simple things like 
like tulsi das he's a contemporary of uh, babar in uh, the 16th century he wrote in one of his doha that the man, the janam stan was destroyed by babar and there was a masjid created over there so these things were also very very useful to present in the court you know because in the court when the fight was going on they had to present all this stuff it was not just enough to say there was a temple under the ground by archaeological surveys because then people would ask okay maybe there was a temple but the temple automatically fell down or it it just collapsed over a period of time and then the masjid came on top of it so what are the proof that it was actually brought down by someone are you understanding this point so even for such small small things you know our people they found all these references and uh, they presented in the court so this uh, you know such simple thing so okay so the main events actually start in the year 1526 you know so that's the time babar is in bharata and uh, you know there is this entire uh, battle that is going on with this king called rana sanga so this rana sanga if you see he was from chittor and the story is that in 1527 rana sanga defeated babar okay so that's a story which even independent historians mention this point that rana sanga defeated babar's army at least in the first battle okay meanwhile something uh, you know was happening in ayodhya so uh, so so it is said that in ayodhya there was a yogi his name was shamananda baba he was a very famous yogi and he was a siddhi kind of a person you know who had various siddhis and he had various students as well so it is said that he had two muslim students one was hazrat abbas musa and the other was jalal shah so these two muslim students also they were like fakirs they came to shamananda baba and shamananda baba it is said he started teaching them the method of obtaining yogic siddhis etc so it is said that over several years these two people learned but uh, unfortunately as the history says that uh, especially this jalal shah he was very devious and he wasn't really uh, committed as in to honor his uh, guru shaman and the baba so so he had a lot of attachment to his muslim faith as well and what he started doing is he started getting the various kabar you know the graves of important muslims in ayodhya because he felt that this is a place where all these yogic cities are there and it's a very powerful place so if uh, some of my muslim friends who passed away or whoever their graves are here they will obtain a lot of credit okay so this was one thing but more uh, devious thing what he did this jalal shah along with hazrat abbas abbas musa to some extent is they actually started talking to babar about the significance of this place and especially jalal shah started telling babar that if we have a mosque over here a masjid then this hindus will be finished forever and islam can take over so so this was the mentality with which they approached babar and it is said that babar once uh, you know in the middle of this battle with rana sanga in 1527 etc he was there on the bank of the sarayu along with his uh, you know lieutenant right uh, yeah one second yeah 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 just just give me a second because there were so many names this is a very important name just give me a second ah uh, one second i just how did i forget this name It's just this one second. Okay. yeah mir banka sorry mir banka khan this was the name i was searching yeah so mir banka khan was his uh, general and uh, so babar instructed him that uh, you know we need to do something we need to uh, demolish this whole temple and instead install uh, instead have a mosque over here so so this is what he told and meanwhile what happened was there was another battle which babar had uh, with uh, you know this chittorgarh uh, king who's uh, yeah who might just mentioned rana sanga and rana sanga was killed actually unfortunately 
okay and uh, it is history says that rana sanga was cheated by some of his own hindu men generals who basically sold you know got sold to the other side and uh, also babar had uh, cannons which was the first time cannons were used in a battle in india and rana sanga couldn't stand that he was actually injured in that war but very soon he passed away and then babar got control over delhi so this is about 1528 okay so meer banka was here uh, with these two under the you know with the encouragement of jalal shah and hazrat abbas musa to bring down the temple so so this is how things started okay now history says that there were over uh, you know uh, 76 wars actually 76 attempts 76 times hindus fought to get this place back so it is said during babar there were four fights you know that means immediately that means between 1528 and 1530 itself there were four big battles attempts made to regain ram janmabhoomi okay during humayun there were 10 during akbar there were 20 aurangzeb 30 uh, and then subsequently some nawabs and nasiruddin wajid ali etc during british time and finally you know in, in one sense it happened in 1992 only and of course uh, that was on the ground but in the court we got it in 2019 so you can just try to imagine this you know 76 attempts and each attempt was you know very very powerful we just go over some of them the first ones we will go over uh, which was during babar's time only okay so so during babar's time basically what happened is as i said uh, rana sanga initially defended but he lost okay uh, the main fight immediately after uh, you know this whole thing was by raja mehtab singh so this basically happens in 1528 so please try to understand right now at this point of time please note the temple has not yet been destroyed fully it is said that they took 3 4 years to get it destroyed so i'll go into that also later but it was not it was it was not done in one stroke it was not that easy to bring the whole temple down the beauty of the temple the structure everything is discussed in uh, some literature as well so it took a lot of time for them to bring it down but it is said that in 1528 there was this raja mehtab singh who led the first major attack and uh, this is actually uh, confirmed in the lucknow gazette uh, by certain british officers as well that such a war happened and 1,72, 74 or 76000 hindus were actually killed in that particular war babar had 4 and 1/2 lakh soldiers uh, this raja mehtab singh it is said that he was going on a yatra to badrinarayan badrinath and when he got the news immediately he directed his entire yatra to ayodhya and it is said among his 174000 all were not soldiers they were ordinary citizens as well but everybody thought that okay we will also try to fight and do something so it seems they all so so this 174000 is not just soldiers soldiers were very less it is said exact number is not available but it is said that because he came from a yatra he was i mean he was en route to a yatra he got all the yatris the soldiers and ordinary lay hindu people with him so and babar had four and a half lakh soldiers so it is said they fought for 70 days and it was veeragati for almost everyone you can imagine that even babar's army was left only with 3000 odd soldiers okay so so you can imagine the scale of this uh, bloody war right so many people were killed and this is this uh, this information is uh, there in the lucknow gazette also by the british officer in the 19th century he confirms this particular incident so it is kind of uh, accepted that yes something like this indeed happened right and uh, it is said that there were four pujaris at the end of the day who just refused to surrender and they were beheaded by babar sar so this was the first battle okay which was in 1528 immediately after that immediately just a few months later there was this pandit uh, devi din pande okay so this devi din pande he lived uh, around 6 miles from ayodhya it is said in two days he assembled around 90000 uh, who were primarily what is called as surya vamshi kshatriyas and it is said there was a five day battle uh, with uh, you know the babar's army again and that general uh, meer banki he was still there at that time he was there in all these wars actually he was there in all these wars and it is said that on the sixth day of the battle after five days on the sixth day our devidin pande actually was hit on the head Uh, by one of the opponent and it is said that his head actually skull cracked in two parts 
but the story says that he took his pagadi and tied his own skull you know that means you can imagine you know the skull is actually damaged but he still ties up his skull and he continues to fight and and what happens see many of this information is there in babar's journal itself where Me mir bangi writes actually so so one thing about the moguls is that they also wrote a lot of stuff right so so in babar's uh, life story also it has been written by mir bangi that yes this incident happened and mir bangi writes that devi din pande killed 700 uh, people from babar's army single handedly one man killing 700 people right devi din pande and uh, mir bangi but but these people uh, the moguls you know they had advanced artillery that is their main thing so whether it is the war uh, with uh, any of these uh, devotees who were fighting or with rana sanga they had ammunition cannons etc so basically ultimately it is said uh, mir bangi managed to kill uh, devi din pande uh, whose last rites were done at vilahari ghat and his descendant ishwar pande is still existing uh, in the same place around so this was the second attempt which was a major battle mm -hmm. right even now, one, yeah. one question is it that same clan who uh, decided not to put pagdi after this defeat yeah you are right it is the same clan perfect so chatri okay. as they are called yeah you are right i forgot to mention that thank you for reminding me on that yeah they, they decided they will never wear pagdis and it had come in the news also that they were all wearing pagdi they are called surya vamchi chatri i remember this because the surya vamchi chatri was there in the news also with this clan who refused to wear pagdi so this is devi din pande you know who sacrifice is and all these numbers please note are coming from babar's journals you know which are written by beer bangi you know because they wrote it actually they didn't uh, they, they actually mentioned about devi din pande babar in fact even mentions rana sanga also saying that he was one of the greatest non hindu general he had ever met okay so 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 these people also have written a lot about uh, you know our hindus who fought this was the second battle the third battle was by hanswar raj ran vijay singh this was again 15 days after devi din pandey's veergati can you imagine these people right people were dying 174000 90000 all dead but they are not giving up with 25000 soldiers he attacks again 25000 now you can just count now by now itself 3 and a half lakh people are dead and we are just talking about one year 1528 just in that one year all this happened it is said 10 days of war were there some people say 10 days in another journal i read it was 17 day war so anyway we don't know whether it was 10 days or 17 days but in but all these uh, soldiers attained virgat there was no one left at the end of it this was the third major battle the fourth major battle was by someone called govind pandey okay now it is said that at the end of this third battle by this time the temple had been fully brought down so these three battles the temple was still coming down but everything was fully destroyed at this time and it is said at this point the shamananda baba you know that original uh, the yogi whom i spoke about whose students basically ditched him jalal shah and company he felt very very bad it is said that you know somehow because of him that all this in some way it happened that his student only encouraged uh, babar and all this happened so he left that place with one of the ram deities and went away okay we don't know much about what happened after that later but he he goes away at this point from this place now it is said that there was a fourth war about govinda pande that lasted only 7 days and again in this also just like uh, you know in most other uh, cases almost everything was destroyed okay uh, all of them were destroyed so 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 in one year immediately four battles with more than 4 lakh uh, hindu uh, warriors and common people who actually sacrificed their life right now the story says that immediately after these things uh, babar he told uh, mir banki to construct the masjid okay at this point the masjid construction starts but it is said the story says now this is also verified huh? i'll tell you how so it is said the story says that uh, mir banki when he started constructing the masjid every night or every second night whatever he constructed would crumble down it seems that means they would make something and next day morning they would see things would again be down so they were like wondering are how is this happening what is this you know why the temple is only not coming the mosque is not coming up you know, whatever they do it is somehow then then mir banki arranged a big security also because he was thinking that maybe the hindus at night they are coming and destroying whatever we are trying to create and so on but no it was still coming down 
So then what happens? He writes to Babar. Then Babar is okay, let it be. Let's leave this place. We have so many other things to do. So he wanted to tell Mir Banke to come back. But unfortunately, this Jalal Shah, you know, that yogi student, that original NBS guy, he was still around. So he said that, no, no, we must persist. Somehow we must do. So at this time, what Babar does is, he does something very interesting. Right? He comes, uh, he approaches the Hindu uh, uh, Mahants in Ayodhya, saying that you only tell me how I can, uh, you know, make this temple. Okay? How I can do this. You are only have to tell me this. Okay, because uh, it, it is simply not happening. So it is said all these uh, uh, Mahans who are there at that point of time. Okay, so this is all given in the story. So they basically, and this is verified, I'll tell you how. So they say that, okay, see, do one thing. Don't, uh, you know, uh, try to, uh, this place is protected by Hanumanji himself. Okay. So, because it is protect my so so here you see this you know I'm just trying to I just I, I'll share this document later but I'm just currently trying to read some part of it. Is par Mahatma it's in Hindi. Is par Mahatma ne uttar diya ki masjid ke naam se ise Hanuman ji banne nahi denge. So they said that Hanuman is not going to allow you to make this temple. Isme kuch parivartan kariye. Do some changes in this. Iski upar Sita Park sthan likhe ise masjid ka roop na dijiye. Tabi ho sakta hai. So and it is said babar ne hindu ki sari sharte swikar kar li aur usi ke anusar uh, you know usne kaam aram kiya so 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 the whole point is what these mahans they advise is they say that see this place is a very powerful place so don't play around here and uh, this is protected by hanuman ji himself so you you will not be able to do this so you have to make sita ki rasoi all these things you have to do so he tells them so so don't and and babar actually follows see now this also helped in many ways. I'll tell you how. One second. I'll just... Uh, one second. Just pardon me. Just that because in the last minute I was coordinating my slides, I just didn't get that extra half an hour to you know get things in order. Yeah, yeah. So so these Mahans basically they told Babar that you name this place as Sita Ike Rasoi. Give a outlook more as a temple. Allow a special room for sadhus to do Rambajan. And namaz will only be on Jumma day, Friday. Okay. And use temple like wooden doors. And this is what they actually do there. Okay. So, so this place was actually used as a masjid very sparingly. Only on Fridays. And that also only till 1858 or something. After that, even that is not used. So actually what happened, you know, later in the Supreme Court, when this case was going... The case was about title. Who owns the title? And it eventually happened that Hindus had more stronger claim to the title in terms of having worshipped in that masjid premise itself for a much longer time than the Muslims who did not have any proof also that they did something. I hope all of you are able to appreciate this particular point. And this is coming from Babar's time itself. Okay, because there was a divine intervention in 1529 itself. And Babar agreed to all these conditions. He said, okay, no problem. We will make it like this. So they had Sita Ike Rasoi, Bhajan was going on. You know, so things like this were also going on over there. Though the structure was of the masjid externally, but all these kind of things were also immediately going on. Okay, uh, since that time. Of course, Babar died in 1530, as we know. Uh, you know, he did all this damage, but he was dead and gone in just hardly. A I know another interesting thing, please try to understand. The masjid work started with the ruins of the mandir only. So, so this also helped in some way because later during archaeological surveys, it became very clear. Okay, I'll come to the archaeological survey later. But very interesting thing, Babar's story says that they named this masjid as Masjid Ye Janmasthan. Please try to appreciate this. Huh? Masjid Ye Janmasthan was the original name they gave to this masjid. They didn't call it Babri Masjid. Uh, the reason is, Babar had no shyness in claiming that I destroyed the temple and made a masjid. You know, he was not a secular... Uh, uh, guy who is trying to you know do something to uh, make everybody happy like uh, our today's uh, politicians etc he was very honest about it he said hey, masjid hai, janmasthan hai. Janmasthan mein humne masjid hai. so that's the name he gave it to it as per his own record okay so so this was also this also became a proof that it was janmasthan only where you made a masjid okay so don't uh, talk something else correct so so this way there was a treaty signed and things started going on. So, Babar was dead and gone in 1530. He died. Okay. He just lived two years after he did all this major damage. Then Humayun was there. Uh, he was very briefly. Only one attack was there that time. Akbar. 
Okay, during Akbar's time, it is said, yeah, so as I said, Sita ki Rasoi was there. All these things were there inside, right? Um, uh, and so on. Okay, I'll come to the archaeology part a little later. Yeah, let me just go ahead a little bit. Yeah, now during Humayun's time, there was this Rani Jairaj Kumari. Okay, she's especially worth mentioning. She was a lady who came with 3,000 women soldiers and also some men soldiers. Can you imagine, you know, a woman coming and trying to fight against the Mughal army to obtain the entire place back. Needless to say, you know, she was uh, killed. All of them attained Viragati. You know, all these people. So uh, it, it's so important to, even just knowing these names, just to remember how many of such people sacrificed their life for this temple. So this was during Humayun's time. During Akbar's time, now this what I'm showing here on the slide is during Akbar's time. So Akbar's time, there were 20 attacks, uh, which were primarily led by one Swami Balaram Achari. So he was a leader along with Swami Maheshwarananda. It is said that what they did, they visited every town and village and created an army. Okay, they got local people like Karasevaks, they said, nah. so this is how it was. There were 20 attacks. Every attack was unsuccessful. Lasted for a few days. Can you imagine? 20 times you lose, but you still are trying to fight to get the place back. 20th attack, it is said, was most ferocious and they won. Okay, the Swami Balaramachari and the Swami Maheshwaranand and their team, they won at the 20th time during Akbar's time. 20th attack, they actually regained something. They didn't regain the whole place. What they regained was they made a Chabutara and a three-feet temple where they started worshipping. Okay, so this this is what they regained. They couldn't, uh, they didn't have so much power also, but at least this much they had. And it is said, Akbar also said, it is said, uh, the history says that Akbar, some of his ministers told him that, Are, let it be, let these people do their worship, uh, let them make their Chabutara and do something. Let's not get into it so much. Okay. So it is said that the Swami Balramachari, he departed at Prayag with the last desire to have Ram Janmabhumi temple. He passed away at that time. So this was during Akbar's time. Then during Shahang, Jah Jahangir and Shah Jahan, things were status quo. Status quo means what? Muslims, we don't know. Officially, there is no record. But as per Babar's record, every Friday, Namaz would be there. And as per the Indian record, which is there, the Hindu's record, they were worshipping Ram Lalla on this Chabutara. So this much happened. Now go next to Aurangzeb's time. So this is Aurangzeb's era. Where there were 30 attempts by Swami Vaishnavdas. The Swami Vaishnavdas is a disciple of uh, the Swami Samartha Ramdas. Uh, you know, he is again such an amazing personality in our Indian history. Right? Uh, this, uh, Swami Samartha Ramdas. He was always worshipping Hanumanji and he was emphasizing on physical strength, on uh, you know being fit, on fighting these adharmic forces, etc. He also collected... The Swami Vaishnavdas also collected Surya Vamsi Kshatriyas, assembled uh, so many of them. And it is said 10,000 Chimta Dari, you know, some kind of uh, throng or something. 10,000 sadhus he had. And uh, they had a battle. Uh, they, they also involved Guru Govind Singh in many ways. And it is said among these 30 attempts, three were very, very, uh, very famous. Where Aurangazeb once he sent one Jalal Khan. Okay, so this Jalal Khan who was there, Jalal Khan or some people say Jambaj Khan. So I'm not sure his exact name. This fellow was killed actually in that battle. Then Aurangzeb sent one uh, Sardar Hassan Ali Khan. He also died. Okay, but then there was the final battle with Aurangzeb. There was one Sahadat Ali Khan. So it is the Sahadat Ali Khan. So it is said uh, the Hindu uh, led by all these people, Vaishnavdas, Guru Govind Singh, and all this team. They were so powerful that even Aurangzeb kept quiet for four years. But suddenly it is said he attacked Aurangzeb. He sent this Hedat Ali Khan. This was the final attack Aurangzeb did. At that time, it is said all these 10,000 warriors, most of these Chimta Dari Sadhus, all these people, they all were killed. And Aurangzeb was even more brutal as we know. Of course, all of them were brutal only. None of these people were good. Okay, history unnecessarily has glorified Akbar and all this stuff. But leave that aside. Okay, but Aurangzeb was obviously brutal of all. So he basically destroyed the Chabutara also. So please try to understand that Chabutara, which was there, na, that was also lost in this particular battle. Okay, so the full right to worship was temporarily lost during the time of Aurangzeb. Then fast forward, right? Then what happens in the next war? I'm sorry, you know, for everything, I couldn't create slides. So that's why I'm just going back and forth. Yeah, so the next thing that happens is during this Nasruddin Haider. So this is somewhere in the 1800 and something. I forgot the exact date. So during his time, it is said there was one king uh, from uh, that area. He had a seven-day war with Nasruddin. 
and he captured that chabutara back you know that chabutara where they were worshiping na ram lalla since that time since akbar's time uh, which was destroyed during our aurangzeb right so so they got that back at this particular point of time they got it back right so then things were continuing this continued until the british rule please try to understand until the british rule all this was going on now in the british rule now i'll come to this point yeah these are very important characters during the british rule what happened was that so so the first war of independence we know was 1857 right uh, which was which we know was primarily caused because of this uh, the hindus were asked to uh, tear up a cartridge which had beef in it and the muslims pork so so there was a rebellion uh, in the sepoy rebellion and we know that story right all of us know the story of uh, this whole rebellion that happened i'll be sharing all these documents later right so all this is given here also this data so uh, you know so this uh, thing was going on where uh, the, where the muslims and the hindus uh, among them this so they both revolted when that happened it is said in 1858 no 1858 is a very important year for several reasons i'll tell you why so in 1858 what happened was the hindus and the muslims they thought why not end our own animosity simply why are we fighting with each other this british are the real enemies of ours right so let us unite and at that time it is said in uh, ayodhya there was this amir ali mauli okay mauli so this person so his photo is here i'm just showing his photo yeah this, this is that amir ali mauli this amir ali mauli and ram charan das so ram charan das was a leader of the hindus at that time amir ali mauli was a muslim mauli So the Amir Ali Mauli, what he told the Hindu community is, we will give you this Babri Masjid back, this Janam Sthan. We don't want this anyway. He said, now this is again recorded. Ah, huh? this Mauli Amir Ali said, we are not worshiping only in this uh, Babri Masjid. We are not doing namaz here because that had also stopped for a long time because of all this work. So he said, anyway, we are not doing any namaz here, and we have fifteen other mosques in Ayodhya, and for us actually, mosque is just a place to offer prayer. Uh, we have nothing. In fact, in Saudi Arabia, if you know, even today, thousands of mosques keep getting demolished and they make a new because for them it is just a prayer hall. They have nothing with the X Y Z place only. There must be a prayer hall. Even so, today in the Middle Eastern countries, they routinely demolish the mosque if they have to widen a highway or something, and they make something else. And they do that very very uh, commonly, right? So this fellow was a wise man, sane man. He said that let's do it. So Ram Charanda said, perfect, because for us this place is important because we can't change Janam Sthan, na. you all can change your masjid you can sit anywhere and pray so they both came together british came to know that these two people are doing this british had a problem they said hey look we are the rulers now you can't because they they wanted to keep the pot boiling right the hindu muslim rivalry they wanted it boiling so this is again history uh, i'll get this paper also and i'll share it with you these two leaders ram charan das and mauli amir ali and amauri amir ali is the one secretary was there achan khan they were all hanged to death on march 18 1858 they were hanged just because they were trying to solve the problem okay can you imagine had this again the british you know they were such a devious people you know sometimes when i hear about this i you know, just the blood boils actually against these britishers right uh, they, they their nuisance value in india over a period of uh, 200 years anyway so it is said that then they, then what happened was the, these both were hanged on a tamarind tree in ayodhya Somewhere near Ayodhya, so that tamarind tree, it is said, became a symbol of Hindu-Muslim unity. And the British again, uh, you know, they were so cunning and devious. They cut down that tamarind tree because they didn't want that to happen, right? Because their whole policy was divide and rule. They cut it. Then it is said that there was another uh, sadhu whose name was uh, Sambu Prasad Chukla. He was a priest uh, in one of the temples in Ayodhya. He started reviving this thing. He started working with other Muslims. Hey, come on. you know just give the place back and let's solve this british hanged him also to death so you know so the british also had this big contribution so this was the year 1858 so it is said on august 2nd 1858 shambhu prasad chukla was hanged to death you know just because he was also trying to do what uh, amir ali mauli and ram charan das were trying so all these uh, three four people were hanged at the same year something else also very interesting happened this was november 28 where there was nihan sikh and accompanied by 24 this nihan sikh so what these people did they barged into the uh, the disputed structure it is not even a masjid that disputed structure and they did a homa 
and they started writing ram and ram on the walls of the inside okay they did all this they started worshiping so this is the earliest so this is again this again became a very important uh, landmark point where there is a proof that at least since that time there is worship of ram going on inside the structure are you understanding this is because of the sikhs and that's why we see today also that this sikh uh, one of their descendants of that sikh his photo is also very much published in social media he is leading a langar in ayodhya because it was one of his forefathers who are, who had barged in in 1858 and uh, started a homa and doing all these things okay so all this happened during the british time so many other things but now again we fast forward a little bit to 1947 india gets independence ah nehru he if he wanted at that time they could have solved this problem very easily at partition but as history is they chose not to okay so 1949 it is said that uh, this was again a very important turning point okay where this uh, uh, there was this uh, entire uh, ram uh, one second i have just noted it down so yeah 1949 one second let's go back to my chronology i'll come to the parts which i have not spoken on yeah so the events of 1949 i'm just seeing if i missed anything okay 1949 and impact of uh, jalagandeshwara temple okay we'll come to that so in 1949 this nirmoha akhada you know so they are also very important people in this entire thing they are of the ramanandi sampraday and uh, one of their leaders also you know this ramananda acharya you may have seen him is a is someone who is congenitally blind he was blind two months after his birth only so they have also contributed so much to this whole thing okay so in 1949 what happened is nirmoha akada they were doing a ram charitamanas patan outside the babri masjid and there was a muslim uh, guard to that whole temple now we see we, now this is where at some point history some things are not very clear it is said that mysteriously ram lalla appears inside the babri masjid okay inside the structure now some people would say that it was the nirmohi akada people who actually put it inside but the muslim soldier who was there he testified to the government that these people did not do somehow it has miraculously happened but he was a government appointed soldier so he said that nobody went inside i am standing and protecting somehow this ram lalla has come inside okay so no one really knows how it came so at that time nehru what he does he through govind vallabhpan who is the chief minister of up they call this kk nayar who is actually a district magistrate there saying that remove the ram lalla from inside kk nayar takes one stance for which we have to salute him in history he said see this dt has somehow come inside nobody knows how it came okay most people here are saying it has miraculously come even the guard government guard says that nobody went in to keep that being the case he said i am not going to remove it he said do what you want you can remove me from service okay so this was a very see th these are very important uh, turning points in history okay so once that happened okay then they had to they put the lock but at least some puja was going on or something inside right so so this is how what happened the claim of the hindus on that 2.77 acre area slowly it becomes strong are you understanding by all these things right in history now when you fast forward the thing now the next thing that happens again then for a long time there is no movement in this whole thing 1982 there is again a very interesting event so i'm just going to open wikipedia page to show you this so this is a this is something that influenced our uh, ashok singhal ji so this is the history of jalakandeshwara temple in vellore tamil nadu so you may be thinking are how come this has come in this story so please pay attention so this jalakandeshwara temple it is said this was a shiva temple which was built in the 16th century and as usual uh, it was mutilated during the muslim invasion okay so this was long back 16th century only it was uh, mutilated and an islamic structure was built to serve as a mosque after destroying the temple and when the british came these rascals they added a church also in that same area just to increase the complication and the murti of shiva murti somehow the murti was shifted to a ganapati temple close by to a ganesh temple okay the shivalinga was shifted and this whole place was given to the archaeological survey of india okay so this is from 1921 it was handed over to archaeological survey yeah? so neither muslims were worshiping nor christians were worshiping nor the hindus were allowed though it was a proper temple only okay but they didn't allow 
somehow what happened in march 16 1981 again a watershed movement this dt on the surface <laughs> there somehow our people they one uh, people they got it and they placed it within the uh, temple that means this see please try to understand okay for 400 years no worship was going on over there it was under the control of Ar- archaeological survey of india but overnight our people what they do when devotee only I forgot his name shiva devotee he brings the deity of lord shiva and he places it inside the uh, temple uh, he from the vinayaka temple he brings it to a jalakanteshwar temple he places it and then what it does next day there is a huge crowd doing puja this that they do kumbhabishekam kumbhabishekam means reconsecration of the temple in 1982 correct all this they do so that's why i opened the wikipedia page to show you this it is said that this event had an effect on the mind of ashok singer who is who is again a person who we have to give lot of credit for this entire thing he was the head of vhp during that time so he thought if a structure which was mutilated by the british by the moguls in the 16th century if the dt can go back into that structure in the 20th century why can't this happen to ram janmabhu so so please try to understand the link right he started feeling that why not do it so it is said in 1984 the vishwa hindu parishad they made this resolution they they came together and they said you know no you know we have to make this resolution these three places are very important to us kashi mathura and ayodhya and we need this back at any cost you know our dds have to go back in these places so so this is how it started right so this is again a very important turning point in history right 1982 this jalagandeshwar temple i mean the impact it had on the minds of the people who were involved in the ram janmabhoomi issue okay then um, you know of course then uh, you know the political story takes over which again is very important sang parivar bjp it is said in uh, 1989 uh, june they make this resolution in himachal that we are going to support this particular movement and then we all know the ratyatra starts in uh, september uh, 1990 correct and uh, then we know that again so many car sevaks you know especially the kotari brothers are to be mentioned so many hundreds of them were shot dead by the then uh, anti hindu government in uh, uttar pradesh and uh, these people's bodies were actually thrown in the sarayu etc but then somehow again in 1993 what have 1992 what happens elections are there and bjp comes in uttar pradesh and that time kalyan singh is the chief minister you know, we have to give credit to these people you know they actually allowed some things to happen without which we would have never got this place because it's a 500 year war each person had a role in it correct so kalyan singh became the chief minister at that time and uh, then this karseva was there we all know then 6 december we know the event 6 december 1992 where finally this disputed structure comes down please note it's not a masjid there was no namaz going on inside for at least 120 years <laughs> right so you cannot even call it a masjid that even before that from babar's time just on friday the jumma was going on for one hour for some years okay but hindus had a much more claim to that dis- that place but the structure had to come down right because how will the structure come down somebody has to break it government cannot break it it will become another whole thing so the kar sevaks bring it down in 1992 when that happens then the legal thing takes over okay now we have to go back to some legal uh, stories here right so so before we come here let, let, let's one more see some more uh, you know one second yeah so 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 see now what happens is see the first legal was not in the 1990s please try to understand the first legal uh, case was filed on may 22nd 1885 by mahant raghubir das in uh, whatever allahabad high court or whichever high court was there this was during british time okay now you see the british i mean this i found this out so the, this is the british uh, their uh, verdict they say it is most unfortunate that a masjid should have been built on a land specially held sacred by the hindus but this has have now it is written in tamil but i'm just telling you this happened 356 years ago they are saying 356 because this event happened in 1886 so they are referring to 1530 correct so they say that we can't do anything about it something that has happened 356 years back we cannot rectify that today so they dismiss the claim but at least what happened was the case was there always okay so there was always a case from the hindu side so this is the time when uh, first uh, case was happened in 1885 then in 1993 after the masjid case, after the disputed structure came down there was the entire effort uh, by uh, you know the shankar dev sharma was the president at that time he asked a question to the lucknow uh, high court of whichever uh, was there 
that how to prove that there was a temple before this masjid. So now that the masjid had come down, please try to understand the masjid had already come, the disputed structure had already come down, right? So because of that, they employed archaeologists. This was in the 1990s. B.R. Mani and Hari Manji. They used what is called as GPRS. So they used GPRS to uh, figure out uh, what is there under the ground. And they found so many things. In fact, they submitted a 300 and uh, what is that? 564 page report they submitted to the court by 2003. In 10 years, they did this work. Where I mean, these are some pictures of their. They found Sanskrit in inscriptions on the wall. They found so many pillars of the temple. They found, uh, you know, various uh, canopies, uh, various structures related to the temple. They found under this Babri, under the disputed structure which had come down on uh, December 6, 1982. They found all these things and they showed it. Now, somebody may say, was that now, now, you know, let's go a little back, little bit back in history. In the 1970s, the Archaeological Survey of India headed by one D.B. Lal and K.K. Muhammad, they also did a survey. Their survey was for a different purpose, remember. It was not to prove that the mandir was there, but their survey was to find out places of Ramayana. Places of Ramayana. So they did survey around that area of the disputed structure. Are you getting it? So they had already found many things, but then what had happened is Bibi Lal had not spoken so much about uh, mandir being under the masjid and those kind of things because it was not relevant in the 1970s. Correct, because the disputed structure was standing and nobody ever imagined that it will open up in some way. Okay, so they said, uh, you know, they kept quiet. And unfortunately, you know, these uh, left-wing historians, Romila Thapar and company, they refuted all these things. But this KK Muhammad, again, he is one person to be given credit. In the 1990s, he came up openly. And he said, there is absolutely no doubt that there was temple only below this whole structure. And he published a book, a report, etc. Despite so much of opposition from the left historians, from the Congress government at that time, by his own Muslim folk, despite all that, he openly, uh, KK Muhammad came out in the open with his findings. So, he's also a person who has to be given credit. But then uh, the court said, okay, anyway, let us do another archaeology. That's why the second archaeological survey was done by B. B. R. Mani and Hari Manji. You understood. So, there was already one archaeological survey in the 1970s. Another one was done in 1990s. Obviously, they all found the same thing. They found all these pillars and all that. I, I think that's what I had in one of my slides also. I just go back to that. Sorry, I, as I said, I couldn't, uh, I didn't order my slides properly for the day, but all the information is here. Yeah, this Kasoti Khambas, correct. So all this they found, right? Uh, so many Kasoti Khambas and all they found out. Okay, so, so the archaeological survey was very clear about uh, what is there under uh, this whole thing, correct? Then what happened is the Allahabad High Court in 2010, they gave a verdict. They said that let's divide this 2.77 acre into three places. Give one to Ram Lalla. Now that's very interesting. The DT in the Indian constitution is an entity who can fight. Okay, the very interesting thing. <laughs> so the DT is also one claimant. So Ram Lalla, they gave one third. One third they gave to this uh, Nirmoha Akhada, Akhada. And one third they gave to the Sunny Wakaf board. But all of them rejected. They said that we want the whole place. And there was a mediation efforts by Ravi Shankar and others and so on. Then it went to the Supreme Court. And then, of course, we know that 40 days they sat and heard the entire thing in one go. And finally, on uh, you know this particular November 9, 2019, they came up with this uh, unanimous judgment. You know, it's a very, very unique thing in Indian history. You see legal history also. Five judges coming together. There was no dissent or anything. Even in the Allahabad High Court, it is said, though they said... Uh, one third, one third, one third, that judgment was two is to one. That means two judges were in support, one was against. The person again said that there is no proof that the temple had been brought down by Baba. Something like that he said. Okay, so anyway, so the Supreme Court came up with a unanimous judgment giving the entire 2.77 acre land and the surrounding area also to the to a trust, they said. They told, they gave it to the central government saying you form a trust, you have all these important people in the trust and make this temple. And uh, they gave a five-acre plot to the masjid people also, far away. Okay, So this is what the Supreme Court did. right? So uh, just a summary. So these are some people whom I really think we should, uh, in some way, there are so many actually, whom we need to give credit. There is Ashok Singhal, the Vishwa Hindu Parishad uh, person. If you read his history and how much he fought for this temple, he is a person whom really we have to 
uh, offer our obeisances and thanks for uh, you know such, such, such something like this happening you know we we are even unable to imagine the impact of that you know today morning as i was coming going to temple at 5 o'clock so many young people on bikes with uh, you know the slogans of uh, jai shri ram were going around on the streets at 5 5:30 in the morning correct so and everywhere we see the housing society where i'm staying and all places around today we just go out for shopping everywhere they are selling things only related to ram temple it's really diwali in entire india right now right so something like this wouldn't have been possible without these important people ashok singhal then among the saints uh, pejawar math swami jayendra saraswati of the kanchi math they also tried their own ways in many things this k parashara is a very important person lawyer the way he fought in the courts amazing 95 year old gentleman you know standing in the court barefoot he would fight the case correct and he says that on the day the, the judgment came in his house in delhi there were a big group of monkeys at 9 o'clock who were jumping up and down on on the top of his house and generally monkeys don't come at night actually you know they, and and he says that in his place there were no monkeys only again it's all divine arrangement and then of course all the people down if you see this kk nair uh, on the left uh, then kk mohammed and bb lal the archaeologists of the 1970s who stood their foot the five member uh, judgment the judges of the supreme court uh, also the politicians we have to give them credit advani ji modi ji even bal thakre you know in the, the the whole movement they led so many others are also there actually you know this ramanand sagar who uh, you know the serial that he did at that time correct on drama in in the 1980s that also led to an awakening of uh, ram bhakti across india the awareness of shri ram uh, this uh, rama badra this entire ramananda sampradaya nirmo akada is part of their zone so all these people they have worked phenomenally hard for this it, it cannot it couldn't have happened without without so many of these people so if you just think about it from 1528 you know the wars that happened the lakhs of people who died gave gave their lives for this particular cause and uh, something unimaginable actually i mean no who would have thought we would get this back right it was it seemed so difficult but again sanatana dharma that's why we call it sanatana dharma because it is eternal right so it gives so much of hope faith to all of us this entire victory okay so i just thought that we need to discuss this briefly anybody wishes to say anything i'm sure you also may have done your own uh, study on this particular thing and i have been studying this since a few days because i thought that this is a re- this is a battle that we really need to study i want to study even much more i thought i would have completed my study today before my presentation actually honestly i must admit that i have not yet completed that's why my presentation was a bit shabby today i was not completely ready but I, i thought nevertheless we should speak today because tomorrow the event is there anybody wishes to say something here bro i have a question here uh, so over the last 5 600 years we see uh, is dinesh here bro Ah, Dinesh. Okay, okay. Sorry, I I didn't recognize from that name. Urban Yoga Institute. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So over the last five six hundred years, we see one of the main reasons why the Sanatan Dharma has been standing strong is because of the Shankar Sanyasis. So all the people who are Naga Sadhu who fought against Aurangzeb or Nadir Shah or any of the Mughals. But now there is like a huge difference in opinion. And even one of the major Sanyasis were also the reasons why we are having such a grand opportunity coming up. so it's a very gray area so in one way we see we are very um, indebted to them because uh, they were the ones who actually stood up for us and at the same time in the current moment just for the basic not sure if i can call it as a ego battle but so it's a very conflict like how to see them types so one thing you need to understand you know there are five shankara mathas correct uh, there is kanchi in the extreme south sringeri mm-hmm. sankara puri and jyotir there are five shankara mathas out of these five even if you see that way na three are supporting whatever is going on kanchi sringeri and dwaraka they are openly supported mm-hmm. they are not coming for whatever reasons but they have supported they have said that our blessings our good wishes are there with this project absolutely no question sringeri and all has released a press order on it this regard it is only the jyotirmat and the puri shankara who are opposed to it okay they have some technical oppositions that who should install and this and that i i personally don't want to criticize them too much because one thing is they are people with knowledge they are people as a matha they have a good legacy they have done good work as well even now they are doing good work especially the puri shankara if you see good work they do 
So I don't want, I mean, we are nobody to criticize them, but it's a difference of opinion. But let me tell you one thing, you know, Hinduism in general was never so centralized. So please try to understand, Shankaras don't hold the same value in a general Hindu society like some uh, Pope or something. It's not like that. It's, it's very, very, you know, people are, I mean, if you see the ordinary Hindu people, most of them have come to know there are five Shankaracharyas only because of this controversy. Nobody even knew that. Mm -hmm. Most ordinary people didn't even know that there are five Mathas across India. They didn't know. There is no mm -hmm. there. So, Hinduism is not that centralized also. So, that's why I think we need not give so much of importance to that. I feel that the opposition parties in India currently are using this just because they want to, you know, embarrass the government currently because they just want to say that what you're doing is not correct as per Shastra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we should take it. We should fall into that trap. It's not to be taken. And if anybody is falling, just tell them that you know, this is, this is ego battle and let's leave it aside. You know, sometimes among big people also, there are ego issues, <laughs> right? So, mm -hmm. well, you know, they are not being invited. And uh, as such, if you see, know, in this entire battle, in this battle of Ram Janma Bhumi, I'm sorry to say, Shankaracharyas did not have any role. None of them. Only Jayendra Saraswati mm -hmm. had But otherwise, none of them had, right? These were ordinary, mm -hmm. Chinese, ordinary Hindus who were fighting throughout, giving up their mm -hmm. lives literally for this project. Uh, yeah, they, they didn't have much. At least there's no, no record that they did anything, at least in this project. General Hinduism, they may have done something. But I'm talking specifically about this. Does that make sense? Would you correct me if, sorry, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, generally, with whatever history that I've been reading, I've always seen that from the Sadhu's perspective, it's mainly from the Shankaracharyas and all, who actually took up the arms and ammunitions to fight against the Mughals. But we... Uh, no, no, no. Shankara never did that. Naga Sadhu... No, the followers... Oh. Prabhuji, Shankaracharyas, na, their first thing is sannyas and give up the world. They don't come into all this. If you see the Shankaracharyas, na, these five of them, they just stay in their matha only most of the time. They don't even travel much. They have a lot of sadhana to do, chanting of Veda and all. They don't take weapon, weapon and all. Come on, we are confusing this with someone else. These Naga Sadhus oh. and Chimta Dari Babas, there are many other Pantas who take up, like the, our Yogi Adityanath Ji, uh, Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, he comes from a Panta like that who take up all these causes. They are from a Kshatriya, you know, monastic race. These are Brahminical people. They have never taken any arms or anything. They only debate with the mouth. That's all. Buddhism, Jainism, and whether, whether the Lord is impersonal, personal. You know, they, they get into only that. Not, not so much any of this. Yeah. Oh, I actually mix, mix them or misunderstand them also. You have part of... somebody else. No, these people have not done anything. Uh, okay, cool. Thank you. Yes, Chankarapani Prabhu, go ahead. You have a question, comment? I thought your hand was up. Anyone else would like to say something else in this regard? You have done your own study in this. I mean, this was not a class based on Shastra, as in it was just history. So I may be wrong in some technical information as well. I just tried to collect whatever I could find. And for everything that I found, I was trying to find at least two, three places where they say the same thing, just to ascertain whether that information is correct or wrong. Did anybody else have any other experience of finding out something in this regard about the Ramjan movie? Okay, then I think we can end the day. There are no further questions on this topic. Chakrapani wanted to say something? You are unmuted. It's not audible. Yeah, in my society also, there is a big celebration down for Ram Navmi. They've invited me for a talk down, so I'm going there as well. Uh, it was an amazing Ekadeshi. So I was doing Nirjal today as always, but I just didn't... This is the first Ekadeshi I literally forgot that there is something called hunger as well because... Some I was so involved since morning in this preparation of this class and so on that never got time to think about it. Anyway, another class in some time now. Yes, uh, Mataji, go ahead. Uh, nothing, Prabhuji. Just wanted to say thank you because we know about the Karsevats because we've been seeing a lot of reports on that. But so much lakhs and lakhs of people have uh, sacrificed their lives now making this event. You know, what you are saying, the class has been... I would say the serve the purpose which you are thinking that we should have all those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the only purpose. 
you know, I was just thinking we need to really offer gratitude to all these people. You know, Govind Prabhu made that point in his article today, right? He says that just like when the 